Today I want to talk about 2D arrays in Unreal Engine using C++. Sometimes you might encounter the problem that you want to represent for example a grid in code and want to store information for each cell. For such a case a two-dimensional array is useful since the grid has rows and columns to identify a unique cell in the grid. So let's say we are in the begin play function. What you can do is to wrap a T array inside another T array so that the inner T array contains the content for a single row and the outer T array contains each row. In this example, we want to store information about a grid that has five rows, six columns and stores integers. We can declare the array like this. And as you can see, it is like explained before, we have a T array inside a T array that then contains integer. In the next step, you can define the number of rows that this T array has by using setNum with, in our case, 5. Next, we define how many columns each row has. For that, we can iterate over the elements in our outer T array, so the rows, and say that the inner T array should contain 6 elements. And if we now log the content of our T array, you will see that it contains 5 rows six columns with each cell containing the value zero. Now let's say we want to change the value of the cell in row three and column four. For that we can write it like this. The first index you provide is for the row and it is two since indices in arrays start at zero. Therefore row three is at index two. And the second index you provide is for the column. So in our case three. With that we have now indexed our cell in row three and column four. And now we can set the value to something like, for example, six. If we now log again the content of our array, you will see that the value in row three, column four is six. Obviously, like when using normal T arrays, if you would try to access an index that doesn't exist, you will cause an error, which can lead to a crash. Therefore, if you index your arrays, also your two-dimensional arrays, always wrap it in a check where you see if the indices that you are using are valid. What you can also do is calling the add method to add an additional element to the outer or inner T array. For example, for the outer array, we can add an additional row like this. Or for one of our inner arrays, we can add an element to the row like this. However, if we look now again at the content of our two dimensional array, you will see that now not all rows contain the same number of elements. If you want to ensure that your T array always has the same size, you should look into T static array, where you can also define the dimensions of your array. If you want me to make a small video about T static array, let me know in the comments. What I have showed you today works fine if you want to create T arrays just for the use in C++. However, when you define your array like this as a class member and mark it as your property, you will be greeted with an error message. This happens since the reflection system does not support nested T arrays like this. However, there is a solution for that problem. In the next video, I will tell you how you can use a struct to solve this problem and create nested T arrays that also can be used in blueprints. Apart from this, if you already have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.